Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Okay, so every economy wants to promote long-run economic growth. But how can we measure whether an economy is growing or contracting? The answer is gross domestic product, also known as GDP. Gross domestic product is defined as the dollar value of all final goods and services produced within a country's borders in one year. Let's take a look at that definition again. Dollar value. GDP is expressed in monetary value. So, what is everything that the country produces within its borders worth in dollars? Final goods and services. GDP only includes finished economic goods, so it doesn't include intermediate goods. Intermediate goods are parts or products that go into producing other finished economic goods. In other words, you can only count the value of a new car produced domestically, not the value of the leather seats, rubber tires, glass windshield, or the stereo system that goes into making the car within a country's borders. GDP only includes the goods and services produced domestically. Let's say an American firm like Apple produces iPhones in factories it owns in China. Even though Apple is an American firm, the iPhones produced in China will not be counted in the United States GDP because they were produced outside the country's borders. This is a major difference between the gross domestic product and something called the gross national product, or GNP. The GNP not only includes the goods and services produced in the United States, but also the goods and services produced by American firms in foreign countries. In one year, gross domestic product only includes goods and services produced in the current year, meaning it doesn't include used goods. Used goods were already included in the year in which they were produced, and therefore can't be included again. If you buy a house that was constructed in 1955, it doesn't count in this year's GDP because the house was already included in the 1955 gross domestic product. GDP also doesn't include financial transactions, like financial investments in bonds and stocks, because nothing is being produced. These are examples of financial capital transfers, and in order to be included in the GDP, something must be produced. GDP also doesn't include non-market or illegal activities, like illegal work or narcotics. If it's under the table or not in the books, it's not included in the GDP. There are two methods of calculating gross domestic product. The first is called the expenditures approach. With the expenditures approach, GDP is calculated by adding together the aggregate spending of consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers in the domestic economy. The second method is the income approach. The income approach calculates GDP by adding together all the aggregate income earned across the economy. When looking at the circular flow model, the expenditures approach is concentrated in the product market, while the income approach is concentrated in the factor market. Either approach can be used to determine a country's gross domestic product. However, the expenditures approach is the more commonly used method, mainly because the expenditures approach usually generates a larger sum. So, how do we use GDP? First, we compare GDP year by year to track the pattern of change in gross domestic product. Comparing GDP year to year can help identify our rates of growth and contraction and can assist economists with tracking where we are on the business cycle. One way we can compare gross domestic product annually is by total value. Here we see fluctuations in the United States GDP in recent years. We can clearly see when GDP increased and decreased meaning the United States experienced periods of economic growth and contraction. However, we can also compare GDP year to year by calculating the percentage change in GDP from one year to another. To do so, you must calculate the difference in GDP between two years and divide it by the GDP in the base year of comparison. For example, if the United States GDP in 2015 was $15 trillion, and in 2016 it was $18 trillion, the United States gross domestic product increased by $3 trillion in 2016. Because 2015 is the base year of comparison, and the 2015 GDP was $15 trillion, that means the United States gross domestic product increased by 20% in 2016. We can also use GDP to measure the effectiveness of government policy. When public policy is used, it will influence GDP and other important economic indicators, like the unemployment rate and price level. GDP can help to determine whether policies accomplish their goals 
and ultimately helped or hurt our economy. Hopefully, we learn from our mistakes and repeat our successes in order to refine our economic performance. For example, when President Franklin Roosevelt implemented his New Deal programs, GDP was contracting and unemployment was at an all-time high. However, beginning in 1934 and continuing into 1936, GDP increased and the New Deal stimulated economic growth. When the House forced President Roosevelt to scale back his programs in 1936, the gross domestic product slipped back into a period of recession, and FDR signed his second New Deal programs into law. GDP began to grow again, and the economy entered into a period of recovery. While it didn't solve the Great Depression, the New Deal programs undoubtedly stimulated GDP expansion. And, of course, we like to compare GDP with other countries. GDP is about bragging rights, and the world is a competitive place. In the open global economy, if a country can boast a larger GDP than its neighbors, it means it's doing things better, and its people have a higher standard of living. For this reason, countries are motivated to maximize their GDP by seeking long-run growth. Here's a list of the largest GDPs in the world in 2016. The United States is far and away the largest economy in the world, producing around $18 trillion of final goods and services. Second is China which produces somewhere near $10 trillion of GDP. Every other country is far behind the leaders, ranging in GDP from around $5 trillion to $3 trillion. By these standards, the United States and China are economic superpowers, and every other country is battling for third place. USA! 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 But, before we get too excited, economists project that China will surpass the United States in GDP production by 2040 mostly because its population of around a billion and a half people provide an immense workforce. The United States simply can't compete unless it quadruples its workforce or it innovates with new technology that quadruples its productivity. Bummer. So, what's included in the gross domestic product? GDP is made up of four components. The first is consumer spending. Consumer spending is the dollar value of expenditures by all consumers on goods and services in the aggregate economy. If you buy a new car, buy a new TV, pay for a service like an oil change or a tire rotation, treat your entire family to dinner, mm. or if you drop $100 at Costco, it counts in the gross domestic product. Costco rocks. It also includes investment spending. Investment spending pertains to firms and not financial investments. Remember, financial investments are not included in the GDP because nothing is being produced. Instead, investment spending is defined as the aggregate expenditures by firms on themselves in order to increase future productivity or profitability. In order to scale and grow, firms will take out loans and reinvest in themselves, either by building new factories or constructing new centers of production. They can innovate in new technology, hire new workers, or restock inventories. All of it is geared towards future profitability and productivity, and all of it will boost the gross domestic product. For example, Starbucks recently renovated most of their locations to include drive throughs to attract on-the-go customers, and McDonald's recently installed play places in most of their locations to attract moms who drive minivans full of kids to get them in the door to buy more Happy Meals. Every time a firm reinvests in themselves, they produce more inputs or goods and services that count in the GDP. The next is government spending. Government spending is the dollar value of expenditures by federal, state, and local governments in the aggregate economy. Government has a role to play in the aggregate economy as a consumer. It can purchase goods and services directly or act on behalf of the consumers in order to acquire public goods in the name of the general welfare of citizens. For example, when President Dwight D. Eisenhower authorized the construction of the federal highway system, he used tax revenues to hire firms to construct interstate roadways for the benefit of the American people. All the resources and finished goods purchased to finish the job were counted in the U.S. GDP. When the federal government pays for the construction of a new aircraft carrier or a nuclear submarine for the benefit of national defense, it's the equivalent of a consumer buying an expensive car. Okay, maybe an incredibly expensive car with the capability to destroy civilizations, but still, this is an example of how the federal government purchasing goods and services as a consumer in the name of the American people can count in the gross domestic product. Lastly, GDP includes net exports. Net exports is the dollar sum difference between the value of exported goods purchased by foreign consumers and foreign goods purchased by domestic consumers. 
Put simply, it's exports minus imports. For example, when goods and services produced in the United States are exported to Canada and sold to Canadian consumers, the value of those goods count as a positive in the American GDP. However, when Canadian goods are imported into the United States and purchased by American consumers, the value of those goods count as a negative in the American GDP. Ideally, we want foreigners to buy more of our goods than we buy from them. This will help to guarantee a favorable trade balance or a trade surplus, which will help lead to an increase in gross domestic product and economic growth. There's actually an easy way to remember the four components of gross domestic product. Consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and net exports combine to form the acronym SIGX. If it's in the current year and it's SIGX, it counts in the GDP. And that is gross domestic product. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video or feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in micro and macroeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my business cycle video and click here for my real and nominal GDP video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.